Hello everyone, your radar contact and welcome to another VAS Aviation video. Welcome to Mass and Balance again. And today we're going to learn some terminology about the center of gravity, what the center of gravity is, and also how, how to calculate it along the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. Later on, we're going to do some exercises that I have extracted from the question bands and a couple of load sheets that I have on hand from two different aircraft. So as always, grab your pen, take your notes, now let's do it. Well, so here you can see the brand new aircraft that we have acquired for the VAS Aviation Flight Academy. No, just kidding. The first term that we have to learn today is the datum. And the datum is an imaginary line or point that the manufacturer sets for the measure of the different parameters and figures that we have to calculate in order to finally calculate the CG. The CG is the center of gravity of the aircraft and the location of the CG. The datum, as I said, is an imaginary line across the aircraft. And the datum can be in different positions and, as I said, is set by the manufacturer. Usually, in most GA aircraft and small airplanes, the datum is located at the firewall. But also, it also can be further aft or forward from that position, especially here just at the tip of the nose. Many aircraft have the datum here at the tip of the nose cone. Now, the next term that we have to learn is the arm. And of course, this is the datum. The datum is a reference point from where we will measure the different arms. So what is the arm of a weight? Imagine we have a weight, like this happy pilot here. This pilot has a weight acting downwards, always the weight, you know, is acting downwards towards the center of the earth. So this pilot is having a weight downwards so the distance from that weight to the datum which is our reference zero point is the arm now since we have the datum at the firewall of the aircraft we can also have some weights in front of that datum. For example, this nose wheel also has a weight. The engine of the aircraft itself also has a weight. The propeller of the aircraft also has a weight. So these, all these weights, forward and in front of the datum, also have some arms, some distance to the datum. Now the thing is, the arms that are located aft of the datum are considered to be positive arms. The weights and the arms that are located in front of the datum are considered to be negative arms. Why it is, why is this so important? Well, next, when we go through our load sheets, and when we want to find the final position of the center of gravity, it is very important for our calculations to see where, if the arms are positive or negative, because, and later on I'm gonna explain here in a second from the formula, when we multiply the weight, the weight of the person or of, of the object, times the arm, if the arm is negative, the resulting moment will be also a negative figure, which will, of course, affect the final result of the CG calculation. So it is very important to know that the arms located backwards, back and aft from the datum, are positive, and the arms located in front of the datum are considered to be negative. Now, the next term that we have is the center of gravity. And the center of gravity of an aircraft, or actually whatever object you have around has a center of gravity, is also like a center of balance. 
So imagine you have your aircraft on top of your finger by sitting by the center of gravity. The aircraft must be in balance there. The center of gravity, wherever it is, because it also moves, that is the center of gravity, can move. And actually, we, as the pilot of the aircraft, can move the center of gravity at our discretion, but only within only within certain limits. So this will be the forward limit and this will be the aft limit. Now the center of gravity, as I said, can move up and down forward and aft, but only within certain limits. And that is why it is very important for us to understand how the center of gravity works and how we can calculate and we can move different weights from the aircraft, from one compartment to another, to keep the center of gravity within limits. Because imagine we have a weight, we add some weight in this baggage compartment. Since there is more weight, the aircraft is heavier at the back, the center of gravity will tend to move backwards. Now, if we remove this baggage and this cargo from the, from the baggage compartment, and again, there are many, many exercises about this um, in the question banks about removing and moving and putting more cargo somewhere or um, somewhere else, just to know how the center of gravity moves and how we can keep it within limits. If we remove this cargo, the aircraft is not having any weight at the tail of the, of the aircraft, so the center of gravity will tend to move forward again. So we have to play because um, imagine we have lots of baggage here, and we also have another compartment here, like the Piper 46 that I used to fly we have a compartment here as well. If the center of gravity is outside of the limits because of this weight, we can move some of this weight from this back compartment to the nose compartment. So the center of gravity, since we're moving some weight forward, the center of gravity will also tend to move forward. So that is the importance of the center of gravity and that is why we need to keep the center of gravity within limits and that's why we are going to learn today and in future lessons more in dip. Now the last thing that we have to know and memorize and understand is a basic formula that we have to learn in order to uh, find out what our CG is and where it is located along the longitudinal axis which is the longitudinal axis of the aircraft is that axis that goes from the nose to the tail of the aircraft and the CG can move back and forth but also it can move up and down but that's another story. The uh, formula that we have to learn is that the weight times the arm is equal to the moment. Now this is all because of physics, of course, so let me try to explain to you this formula with a couple of examples, very simple. Um, now imagine, imagine that my arm is the longitudinal axis of the aircraft, my arm. My elbow will act as a pivot, so I will consider my elbow to be the datum of this longitudinal axis. Now if I put a weight somewhere along my arm, and just give me a second because I have a cup here for my morning coffee. Um, if I place the cup somewhere close to the datum, and I don't want to drop it, the cup, I am not producing any high force to hold the cup in position because it is close to the pivot. You can try this at home. Now, if I put the cup further away from the datum, from our reference and from our pivot, 
Now I, I can feel my arm doing some force to hold the cap up. The closer the cap is to the datum, the smaller will, the moment will be. The farther away the weight is from the pivot and from the datum, the bigger the moment will be. The bigger the force I have to do will be to hold that weight in place. Another example is, imagine a teeter-totter, which I'm sure you have played here somewhere in your life. Imagine a teeter-totter. Now imagine we have a person, a small person here, and we have a very big person on the other side. Of course, because we know that the bigger person on the right, the, the bar and the arm of the seesaw will tend to tilt to the side of the bigger person. Now, how can we get this bar from the teeter-totter to be in balance? We can do it two ways, and of course we cannot make this small person to get bigger in a second. We have to play with the elements we have to have the bar to be in balance, and how can we do that? We can do it two, two ways. First of all, we can move the bigger person closer to the pivot. So the arm, as we move the bigger person closer to the pivot, the arm of that weight will be smaller. So the bar will tend to level off and to be in balance. Now the other way that we have is to move the pivot closer to the bigger person or to the bigger weight. So now the arm of the small person will be bigger and the bar will tend to get into balance again. This is very, very important that we know this formula and that we are familiar with it and that we are comfortable working with it because it is very, very important to calculate our CG and where later on we will see where it is located in the aircraft. So now, this being said, I'm gonna do uh, one exercise that I have extracted from the question banks and later on I'm gonna show a couple load sheets that I have on hand. Now here's a very simple exercise that I have extracted from the question banks. Uh, we have some information that they give the basic empty mass of our aircraft and if you remember the previous video about mass and balance you should know what the basic empty mass is. The BEM is 2635 pounds. The moment of that basic empty mass is 204,793.5 inches pounds. If you remember from the formula the moment is the weight times the arm, so it is a weight times the distance. The mass at the front seats is 90 pounds and the arm of those front seats is 78 inches, so it is 78, all these arms are positive, so we can understand that we, we can guess that we are behind the datum, so we are, the front seats are 78 inches behind the datum line. The mass at the aft seats is 186 pounds and the arm of those back seats is 117 inches behind the datum. The block fuel is 850 pounds, the taxi fuel is 85 pounds and the arm of the fuel tanks is 86 inches behind the datum. Now they're asking, determine the center of gravity for the takeoff mass. Now we have some information and if we remember again, and that video will be linked down in the description, if we remember from that video, how can we get from the takeoff mass on the diagram that we learned? Well the takeoff mass we know that is the zero fuel mass plus the takeoff fuel, but we don't have the takeoff fuel, we have the block, which is all the fuel that we load 
in our aircraft at the gate and we have the taxi fuel which is the fuel that we calculate to consume during the taxi so if we deduce the taxi fuel from the block fuel we will have and we will get the expected fuel that we'll have at the moment of takeoff which is what we with what we want so 850 minus 85 765 pounds we will have for the takeoff fuel and now that we have this information which is the fuel that we want we don't want the block fuel and we don't want the taxi fuel we want the takeoff fuel which we now have calculated now we can start working the table I'm going to remove all this information and we're gonna start working the table that will help us calculate the weights with the arms times multiplying the moments and then the sum of all those and a simple division will get the center of gravity position and the total center of gravity and the total weight of the aircraft which is what we want well so I just have removed all the information that we had before and put it into a very simple table format so we can work easily through all the figures and calculations we have our weights we have our arms and we have our moments and remember the formula and memorize weight times the arm is equal to the moment we have the BAM of our aircraft and we have the moment this information the manufacturer will give you the weight of the aircraft as it is if you remember from the previous video the arm you don't need it and the moment to finally get all the CG calculations I have just put the information in the table so the mass of the front seats and the arm the aft seat mass which is 186 on the arm and the takeoff fuel mass and the fuel tank and the fuel tank arm now how can we get first of all even though we are not asked to we are not required to get it how can we get the total mass of the aircraft well if we remember from the diagram the total mass of the aircraft at the moment of takeoff in this case because we only have the takeoff fuel will be just the sum of all these quantities which is the basic empty mass of the aircraft 2635 plus the pilot plus the passengers in the at the aft seats 186 plus the fuel that we have at that moment which is 300 um, I'm sorry 3,676 pounds we have pounds now next thing we know next thing we need what we need what they're asking for is the position of the center of gravity and the position of the center of gravity related to the datum is the arm so how can we get to this number with this number now well what we need is the other figure we need the moment the total moment of the aircraft which same as the weight will be the sum of all the moments we have one moment we need three more moments to get to the total moment here which will be a very very big number and I'm gonna talk about that in just a second where we're done doing that now how can we get to the moment the weight times the arm for each position also called station the front seat is 90 pounds times 78 is 7020 pounds inches the aft seats is 186 times 117 is 21,000 762 pounds inches and now the takeoff fuel is 765 times 86 which is 65,790 pounds inches as I said earlier the total moment 
of the aircraft will be the sum of all the moments, which is six, 65,790 plus 21,762 plus 7,020 plus 204793.5. The total moment of the aircraft is 2,099. 299,365.5 decimal 5. That is the total moment of the aircraft. What we want is the position of the center of gravity, which is the total. This is the CG. If we just removed and convert this formula, we get that the weight will get will be here and the arm will get alone on the left side of the formula so the arm is equal to the moment divided by the weight we have the very big number divided by the total weight 3676 we get a result as of 81 comma 40 three seven inches and this is the final location of our CG now something I want to talk to you because you might encounter this term also in your exercises is what is called the load index now that load index you you see that we have very very big numbers and figures in the moment uh, Air section because we have big numbers and 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 this is a very small aircraft with with just uh, a pilot and, and, and maybe a couple passengers um, but in bigger aircraft when you have to sum up lots of very big moments you end up having a very very big number on the total moment uh, figure now the load index is just a constant that the manufacturer will set to divide every one of the moments by that constant so the total number and the the I mean the um, the length of the number is smaller and easier to work with that is the load index just as the information just as the information in case you encounter that term during your examinations and during the exercises now what I want to show you is one example of a real load sheet, actually a couple of those. One of them is from a Piper Cherokee and the other one is from a Carpet Jet Cessna Citation. So let's get into the paperwork now and let's see how we do it in real life and how we calculate the center of gravity position. Well I finally decided to do it on my computer because I think the quality of the image is going to be better this way. Here you can see a very basic and simple weight and balance sheet for a PA-28 Turkey Archer 2 aircraft. We can see different tables and also a graphic, a diagram on the right side for the envelope. I will talk about that in a second. But first of all, what we have to do is fill in the blanks of our, about our mass and weight uh, situation for our flight. I'm going to fill this weight and balance sheet as if I am the pilot, which I know and I know all the information that I have to know to feel and to complete this weight and balance or the load sheet. We have the basic empty weight, as I said before, this is given by the manufacturer of the aircraft, 1588, we have the arm and we have the moment. And then we have the pilot and from passenger. Now imagine we are doing a cross county, cross country with one pilot and two passengers. We have a pilot we have a pilot at the front, also we have a passenger at the front, or the instructor, and we have a passenger in the back seats, or let's say another student. Now the pilot and the front passenger both are 75 kilos, which is a standard mass that we use um, here in Spain. Now we have to transfer and we have to convert those kilos into pounds, which I have already done, which is 330 Oh, this is too big. Which is 330 pounds. 
The passenger, the rear seat, we rear seat, we only have one passenger. It is also 75 kilos, which is 165 pounds. The baggage, we have a little bit of a baggage here, which is 33 pounds. And since it is a cross country, we're gonna suppose that we are completely fuel, uh, full of fuel, which is 48 gallons. In this aircraft, we have to multiply that. 48 times 6 is 200. and 88 pounds now we can calculate the gross weight and they give also some information for the maximum gross weight the gross weight is the total weight of the aircraft now we have to sum up all those quantities 1588 plus 330 plus 165 plus 33 plus 288 is 2000 four hundred and four pounds are we within limits yes we are because the max gross weight is two thousand five hundred and fifty so we are good to go now what we have to do is calculate all the moments same as we did before 330 times 80 50 is 26565 the total is 216.102.7 inches pounds. Next we have to do to find war, where our CG is, is same as we did before, just divide by the total weight, 2404. And the CG of our aircraft will be located at 89.9 9 inches aft of the datum. If we continue reading, the max weight here <clears throat> for the normal category is 2550 pounds and the baggage we accept is 200 pounds. The max weight for the utility category is 2130 pounds and we cannot have any baggage on board. As you know from other subjects, the utility category is more restrictive uh, to the performance of the flight. Totals must be within approved weight and CG limits. It is the responsibility of the airplane owner and the pilot to ensure that the airplane is loaded properly. The basic empty weight CG is noted on the weight and balance data form. If the airplane has been altered, refer to the weight and balance record for this information in case we have changed something importantly from the aircraft that it should be are recorded in that uh, information. Now the fuel planning and performance data is something we have to do for the flight, dividing and um, having all the fuel information in different sections for the trip fuel, the trip fuel. For the purpose of this explanation and video we don't need it. We only know that our total fuel of our aircraft is 48 pounds. I mean 48 is the total and whatever time it gives, which will be about five or six hours endurance. But we don't need to do this for the purpose of this video. What we want to know is what the total weight of the aircraft is, 2,404, we are within limits of the gross weight. And now we have to do, we have to know, we need to know if the position of the center of gravity is within the limits. Now we have a table here, a diagram, a graphic for the envelope which will show visually if the CG of our current aircraft is within the limits. We have a column on the left side which means the total weight of the aircraft. We have 2,404, so approximately over there. Now down Below we have the uh, the arms for this CG, which we have already calculated, which we are at 89.9, so approximately of a 90 over there. So this resulting crossing position will be 
the CG position of our current aircraft. Are we within limits? Yes, we are. We are within the limits of the normal category aircraft, but we are outside the limits of the utility category aircraft. We're very, very full of fuel, and we have three people on a seat on a four-seat aircraft, which is actually pretty match. We are very, very heavy on this flight, so we are just inside the normal category um, envelope, but we are outside the utility category envelope. And this is the way we normally fill a um, normal GA aircraft weight and balance sheet. Well now, and just to finish the video and so you can see what a real load sheet looks like in a jet aircraft, here is the load sheet for a Cessna Citation Carpet Jet. Uh, we have some information on the top like the aircraft model, the aircraft registration, the configuration of seats and different information about the flight. But then down below we have the very same tables that we used in the small aircraft like a Piper Cherokee. Uh, this, the difference about this is that all this information is already calculated by a computer. Then this information and those calculations are double checked by the flight dispatcher. And then all this information is again checked by the pilots. Uh, but we have the very same figures. We have the BAM. We have the dome, which we learned in the previous video. And uh, again, all the weights with all the moments, all the tables, all the figures. And of course, we have our envelope diagram and, uh, and graphic over there. Now, I want to just drop a question for you. And I want you to reply in the comment section, if you may. And that is why we have three passengers on board on this flight. This was a very short flight, uh, like a 45 minute flight with three passengers on board. Now, the question I have is why do we say that all these three passengers are 212 pounds? So if you know the answer, I'd like you to reply in the comment section, please. And again, we have all the weights, the zero fuel mass here, the takeoff mass, the landing mass with all the moments. And finally, what we check is that everything is correct and all our figures are within the envelope limits which we can see they are the zero fuel mass the landing mass and the takeoff mass also we have the maximum weights here yes it's a reference so um, that's all for this video I hope it was helpful for you and uh, as always thanks for watching and the frequency changer approved squawk VFR and see you in the next one